Working group reports, yeah? We will do working group reports in four minutes. And if you have more questions that we couldn't answer now, you know where to find us. <laughs> Bullet points. And we're not hiding either, just grab us. Hi everyone. So yeah, very quickly, for those that do not know of us, the community working room takes care of the community, actually. So in the end, what you are asked to do is to enable discussions to flow in a healthy way within the community, maintain good relationships between, um, between our people. And whenever we're asked to, we step in to resolve some conflicts of situations. Um, we are three members uh, that are currently active, uh, and we're all here today and during Academy. It's David Edmondson, uh, Andy Betts over there, and myself, who, who I joined uh, last year, so I've been around for one year. And uh, we, we had two members stepping down since last year, Bavisha and Valerie, who didn't have uh, the time to help more. Um, so, very quickly to go over our work over the past year, um, what we tried to do and with the help of sysadmin we achieved is to create this private space, a private team on invent.kd.org. As you understand, lots of times uh, the work the community working group is asked to do is a bit, um, it's a bit uh, on the edge of it, which should it be public or not. Sometimes we have to handle more intricate situations. So. It's good to have a private space where we can talk between us and at some times also with the board in order to, to, to coordinate and how we act on this. And of course, it's a way for us now to, to document all the work we've been doing. Um, so we can track previous discussions, we can track previous complaints, uh, see how we handled those in the past or as new members come in, they can go back and see. So that's a very, uh, we think it's an important uh, next step for us. Um, in terms of the EV, um, we realized that the website on the EV, uh, on the web, web page is kind of outdated, let's say. It's been around for a lot of time now. The working group has been around for, I think, 15 years now. And lots of the information there is not up to date. So we want to, uh, we already started working on updating, updating it, but uh, we need to continue on that. and. Uh, make sure it represents where we're currently standing and where we're, we want to go. Uh, in terms of actual, uh, let's say, uh, requests that came in, in uh, since our last AGM, we had a total of four requests. Um, these were about two community members uh, specifically, and actually three of those requests were about one uh, specific uh, individual. Um, as you see, one was a misunderstanding, the, others, the other two we had to step up and try to take action. Um, just so you know what kind of uh, types of requests we usually get, you will see that uh, a sample from the last year at least, it's a small one, but uh, it's, I think, uh, indicative enough. Uh, one of them was about metric requests, the process, so we had a person um, let's say doing some things uh, not in the uh, standardized way, uh, merging uh, some code, and then we had complaints about the process that, that was happening, and the other was about improper behavior or people reacting to, uh, to things in, let's say, not good ways. Now, in terms of the lessons we learned, uh, you can understand, as I mentioned, that many times we, are, uh, we have to step in and discuss things that are not always right or wrong, or yes or no, very clear answers. So the important thing here is for us, three different individuals to try and discuss and you know, try to establish an action plan when we have a complaint and set the expectations of what we expect from the, from the person in question or the people involved. So it's the, the, let's say the hard work we need to put in is usually when we discuss about a specific case to try and understand, take as much information in from the people that are involved Try to make the, uh, try to, for us to have a good understanding of what is happening. And then uh, we need to reach a consensus, or we'll try to reach a consensus on how we act, because we, we want to give clear guidelines on what the next step is to the people involved, and not, uh, you know, uh, uh, having them confused or not, not giving clear answers, which usually doesn't help. If, we, if you leave out things in the open when you're doing this kind of work, you, it can easily go either way. Uh, one lesson we learned is that we should probably try to be responding faster to, be, to people making requests. 
both once they do the complaint, so yeah, you had a complaint, it's good for you to know that we are on it, so that's the first step. And then once we have taken action, it's good to go back and follow up to that person to say, hey, this is what we do, if, it, if it's still a problem, uh, do this and that. So this is something we can uh, definitely improve. Um, another uh, thing we learned, I already mentioned it earlier, is about documenting our discussion. This is something we're doing now. Uh, it helps a lot going back, having a history of how we, uh, what the complaints were that came in, uh, what, uh, what was our discussion, how did it evolve, and what was then the result. And so we can use that in order to be faster, maybe, in responding to future requests or you know, as a reference when we're doing that. And another thing that we saw that will probably be useful is that sometimes you have these like repeating, let's say, um, uh, problems. So it would be good for us uh, from time to time when we're talking to people to have a, a place the way you have your code of contact where you point people at. It would be good to have, let's say, some type of wiki or page where we can point people to to see what's been asked for them and how they were expected, uh, they are expected to act in specific situations. Of course, as we all, you saw, we're three persons, so we could use all the help we can get. Um, in order to achieve what I already mentioned, try to be faster and uh, when looking into new requests. Sometimes these things take time. You need to take a step back, discuss, take action, talk to people, gather data and information, make sure everybody understands uh, what, what the position they're in, then discuss it internally, then go out and give some uh, you know, guidelines on what should happen. Maybe sometimes you need to coordinate it with the board, you need to coordinate it with sysadmin. So it takes time and if we have more persons, maybe we can uh, push that forward faster. And then uh, we want to try, if we have the help of, of course, to expand our role a bit more and be more proactive because usually the way uh, we act is when we're being called upon, when there's a complaint, when there's a request. So we, need, we are more reactive and if we have more people and more resources, we can be more proactive. To quickly uh, conclude, um, our key goals for the coming year is that we want to start having regular meetings, which we haven't uh, had so far. We can use this as working sessions as well to start talking uh, about how we want to evolve. If no request comes up for a, a, a big amount of time, that's a good thing, I guess, for our community. Hopefully things are not happening or learning about them. But at the same time, it's good for us to stay connected and have something to a common place where we can work and progress. Uh, as I mentioned already, the website and then the wiki that we want to maybe start working on it. And then a bit more is about our own identity as a community working group. Um, from my time at least in the board as well, uh, I know that sometimes the community had a specific um, you know, um, perspective on how the community working group should act. And uh, there are things I think we can improve on top of that. We now have Joseph who is working more on community topics. We think we can work together with him much more. We are already trying to be at places like the forum, the discuss the KDE and things like that, so we can act as moderators as well. We have direct access to these kind of discussions. And then in general, try to do more community building work and less, let's say, policing and supporting people when they, there are conflicts. As I mentioned, all three of us are here. You can talk to us, but also if you prefer to do it online, um, you can email us at this address. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, with that, we are moving on to Cracker. Cracker. The, the money part of it with the financial working group. Oh, no. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Financial working group. Our job is to help the treasurer with money-related issues and the whole board in general with money-related things and helping the community come up with a budget and stick to your budget. The people on the financial working group are Ica, Marta and Till. I am none of those people. I'm filling in because unfortunately they couldn't make it. So message these people. Overview of this year, we finally outspent our income. We've had a lot of income, we've got a lot of reserves, the board were talking about it a lot, and we deliberately outspent our income, and it's important to stress that. And this is partly because the pandemic is over, COVID doesn't exist anymore, and we've made an effort to hire more people. But that doesn't mean our income was bad in 2022. In fact, it, it increased uh, from all our previous years. 
there will be exciting graphs later, but it's increasing more than just inflation. But, as mentioned, deliberately increased expenses, mostly personnel. And planning is spot on. We were within 1.5% of the planned budget. So graphs, general trend upwards. 2018 was an exception where magic stuff happened, where we got loads of money. But we're still improving nonetheless. And expenses going up because we've got money to spend. So this year, we outspent our income, which is what we wanted to do. Graphs. Uh, 2023, um, the budget plan made, staying on course, we're still trying to burn through some of those reserves, responsibly, not just spending it all on biscuits for the board. Um, and, but because we're outspending our income, we do need to make sure our fundraising, coming up next, uh, is staying on top to keep up with our new expenses that we want to keep on doing forever and ever. So how's 2023 looking? On track, we've got three new patrons. Yay! And we're pleased with the Academy sponsorships. And everything's going well. There's also a new tool written by Ike Hein, which is going to allow the financial working group to get real-time feedback on what's happening with the money, rather than doing this long manual work once a year. So that hopefully will mean more time for doing more productive tasks. And here's some screenshots of it with graphs. And it's going to be amazing. Thank you. And we're continuing with the money with the fundraising working group. OK, so after the financial is the fundraising, we get the money. Uh, so what we are doing is like we are trying to uh, identify uh, fundraising opportunities, like on putting up with um, uh, the, uh, the execution of the fundraising campaigns, like uh, do a lot of organization, try to uh, coordinate with whole team to create the materials, uh, like for the end of the year campaign, and we also like working on the infrastructure. Uh, for the donations, uh, we'll come back to that later. Uh, so, who we are? So, it's me, uh, Lace, Lace, Nate, and also Lydia, who is helping. Uh, so, this year we like, uh, did the calendar fusion campaign, uh, which was like uh, the first donor box based campaign we did, and it was like a huge success. I mean, here's the numbers, like, it was like a lot of people donated. Uh, we got um, some monthly and annual as a recurring donation, which is even better than uh, one-time donations. Yeah. Um, yeah, we also did like an end of the year campaign, which uh, was also like a huge success. Um, like we planned to, the goal was 20,000 and we got more, which is always good. Um, like also like a lot of sets, so on. I think there's the documents online somewhere. Yeah, so if you want someone to see the uh, set, uh, we can look at that later. Uh, yeah, the priority for the near future is uh, slightly moving uh, away from CVCRM. If we are not really happy with uh, CVCRM, we talked about moving from CVCRM since yes, and now we are clearly doing it. I mean, we already like all the new nation campaigns about based on the box, and we are hoping to shut down the CVCM instance soon. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, big thanks to the promo team who was really helpful with the fundraising campaigns. Thanks. <laughs> And now we're moving on to the non-money parts of it, to the legal pieces. Um. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So this is the report of the KDE Free Cute Working Group and also a bit also of the foundation. 
Um, our members in the foundation of KDE are Albert and Olaf. Albert has a talk in the other room, so I'm doing the report. Um, the other members are me, Chris, Eike, Frederick, Martin, and the newest member, Victoria, since last year's academy, actually. So what we did, we usually meet monthly and discuss any topics that come up in the foundation to, to support our members. Um, and all, we also have a chat channel on Matrix to discuss any issues that pop up and need instant action or discussion or like other, our opinions on matters. Um, the foundation itself had one virtual meeting because nobody wants to travel to Finland or Norway all the time. Um, the, uh, the Qt company has a new member, Juha Pekaniemi, um, who is replacing Lars Knoll, who was also the chairman in the past, and the foundation thanks him for all the work he has done there. So our, our, what we achieved last year um, was mani managed to get the accounting on time submitted to the authorities, which was a bit stressful because the accountants actually s wanted to have Albert's signature like few days before they need to be sent to the authorities in Norway. <laughs> so it <laughs> was a bit short on time. Um, the f relations with the Qt company members are, actually, are good, as we are told, also with the new member. Um, and the uh, foundation turned 25 years old and Qt is still free software, so that's an achievement that we have. <laughs> What we need to do, where we need your help is um, the Qt company asked us if we could have a meeting with KDE people to discuss things about Qt. Um, it was not quite clear to us what they really expected from us, but if you think of something or know something who would be useful to meet with the Qt company, talk to us. Um, and in general, be on good relations with the Qt company and the Qt project and work with them, collaborate with them, be nice to them. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. And that brings us to uh, the last one, which is about all the infrastructure we run on from the submits. Okay. So this report is prepared by Ben, but uh, yeah, so we basically make sure that our servers continue to run and our services continue to run. And so some of data points that are interesting are like we handle 47 terabytes of data in June month. And that completely excludes what CDN and Cloudflare already like uh, handles for us. And we av we serve average 170 web request per second. And this excludes the GitLab because GitLab is like other much larger thing. Uh, so these are our members. And also like we have got support from other community members on very specific services, for example, Sentry or things like that. Uh, I think this is like a recurring item because every time the essentially server run, OS running on the server runs out of like support and we need to like rebuild our servers. Uh, so we, we rebuilt the server that hosts our website and uh, also we took over the uh, discuss uh, instance of the uh, discourse instance of the Krita. And uh, uh, like due to website work done by our uh, web team, we also eliminated uh, capacity of framework like uh, it was it was powering our old websites. Uh, also the due to like OpenStreetMap and all that requirements, uh, we we were running out of the space or on the, our CDN server, so uh, we also had to rebuild and expand it. And 
also the Alexar, which we use for hosting the various, uh, like hosting the, allowing the developers to source our code. So that also we move to different server. And yeah. uh, also some of the improvements is like the big blue button, uh, what was previously happening was that it was on the smaller server. So if you wanted to host some uh, sprint or if you wanted to host some meeting, you had to call, like you had to create a sysadmin ticket, you had to ask us like, please increase it for uh, this period and we had to then increase it and then we had to decrease it. And so it was a bit of a, bit of a manual work that we had to do. Uh, but now we put it in like already much larger servers. So like we don't need to do that scale up and down dance uh, essentially. So that also like one of the thing is like we moved away from the digital ocean to uh, uh, Hasner because uh, Digital Ocean essentially had a, a cloud-based uh, uh, CPU, so it was not so, per so performing. And now this is like a native hardware. And yeah, I mentioned the Cretartish.org, which is like discourse forum that we took over hosting. Also, GitLab continues to be uh, like GitLab migration continues to be like. Uh, going ahead, so we have uh, quite a bit of uh, updates happening to GitLab regularly. They basically release every month, more or less. And we also did uh, some of the CI work. So basically, when we started GitLab migration, our plan was to basically do it in uh, three different uh, steps. So one was like uh, hosting the code, then uh, having the normal CI and then binary factory. So we also have like proof of concept builds for uh, this binary factory. Uh, there is a buff about it uh, uh, that we have to also, uh, we, can we, we have to discuss it and we have to finalize it. Um, also Docker Hub basically made it, bit more, made it commercial. So we had to ho host the Docker registry for ourselves because uh, like if you had to go through like Docker up, then it, you can only pull, pull in Docker images for some limited time. And that was not uh, really scalable for our CI. Okay, so where we need help. Uh, so we, there, are, there are like our key goals. So GitLab signing service, I, th I think as I mentioned, there is a buff about it. Uh, we also have to migrate our tasks because uh, that is the only thing that is keeping the fabricator alive. So we have to like uh, either create, like we have to create archive and we also have to move those tasks to GitLab. And yeah, so we have to rebuild our mail system, which includes the migration to mailman three and retirement of my query and query identity. I think like right now there is only one or two services which are actually using query identity and rest of the things have been migrated to GitLab as a like authentication server. So yeah, any questions? Or maybe we don't have time for it, I don't know. We but, have plenty of time for questions, but it can be questions for sysadmin, it can be questions to any of the other working groups. <laughs> well, if you all get on stage, Can you touch your nose? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Do we have any sensible questions from the audience uh, for any of our working groups? Nick. It seems you are not excited about uh, it. May I ask Carl to remind me at least what uh, what's the percentage that Turner Box keeps when we get a donation? I think it was 5%, but I'm not completely sure. I can check again. Other questions from the audience? Or you've been so tremendously informative and clear that we have no questions. 
and that we can go for coffee early. Ooh.